activity number one. Hey everyone, in today's video, we are talking all about addition. I did a video a few weeks ago really developing students' number sense with numbers zero through 10. It looks like this right here. But as October rolls around, we really start to dive into beginning addition, specifically addition within 10, you know, and then later on we go to addition within 20 and it kind of develops from there. So in today's video, I really wanna share some of my favorite activities for teaching addition. Some of them are going to be hands-on, some of them include higher order thinking, some of them are games, but I'll give you a big hint, all of the activities I share in today's video are completely free. So today I'm going to quickly go through each of the activities, how to play it, why I like it, and at the end I'll tell you where you can grab it. If you're ready to dive in, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, let's get started. Activity number one is called Roll, Subitize, and Add. It looks like this right here. There are actually two different boards for this, but here students are going to practice both subitizing and they're going to practice adding numbers. So all they have to do is they can do this with a partner or they can do this independently, but they will first roll that dice. They will have to subitize just by looking at the dice. They'll do one at a time and then they'll determine what number they landed on and they'll subitize the dots next to that number. So if they rolled a two, they would see two groups of three and they would recognize that that is six. Once they've done that, they will actually go ahead and grab six manipulatives. Then they will roll the second die, subitize that number, grab the manipulatives, and add them together. A very simple activity, but students are practicing a few different things here, right? They are rolling the die and finding the matching number. They are subitizing and grouping those dots to find what number is being shown. They're practicing one-to-one -one correspondence as they are grabbing cubes to match that number. And lastly, they're adding them together to find the sum. Activity number two is one I have shared quite a few times in the past. It is called addition grab bags. The activity looks like this and I love this one because you can change it up so many different ways. Um, but essentially you just grab two different bags. Um, here I had some colored ones but a brown paper bag works completely fine. And you fill it with a bunch of manipulatives. Now you could start by only doing 10 in each one. Um, depending on what you want your students to do. They can be bigger manipulatives, they can be smaller manipulatives, but basically students will close their eyes, they will put a hand in each bag, and they will grab those items. Once they grab them, they place them in front of them, and they go ahead and add them up and practice writing the addition sentence. Now that recording sheet, I would definitely laminate it or put it in a plastic sleeve because you will have students doing this over and over and over again. Um, so they are writing that addition sentence out, they are erasing it, putting the manipulatives back in the bag, grabbing again. I try to challenge them to get as many different addition sentences as they can. Naturally, at first, your kids are gonna put their hands in, they're gonna grab as many things as they can and add them together. But when I tell them that they need to try to make a different sum every time, that helps them like think, okay, I'm gonna try to grab less from here, more from here. And again, it can be something that you can fill up with seasonal erasers, you can fill it up with cubes, with little counting bears. You can fill up those bags with anything and switch it out often. Activity number three I love are some addition fix-it cards. Now here is what they look like in this freebie. There's quite a few different ones here, but you can see from this example that I will pose a problem and I usually actually display this card under a doc cam or I'll just throw it up on the smart board in the original PDF so students can see what it looks like. And they have to determine how they can fix this problem. If you look on the left, there's one with some uh, crayons and some pens, and it says five plus seven equals 14. Now your students have to think about, hmm, what is wrong in that problem? They can actually count up the crayons, they can count up the pens, they'll see there are five and there's seven, but together it makes 12, so they might wanna change that sum. But then as your students get used to this, I like to remind them that they could actually fix this another way. Maybe they want to add two more crayons and change the five to seven to be seven plus seven equals 14. That's another way to fix the problem. In the back, we have a little bit of a number bond, but with three different add-ins, so they have to determine what they could fix there. And again, they could really change any of those numbers to fix the problem. We have a little story problem. Each puppy has four legs. If another puppy shows up, there will be 16 legs in the picture. And here they can actually count up the legs of two puppies, and then sometimes if we need to, I will draw, you know, to the best of my ability, a third puppy, and we'll count up how many legs there are. 
And we also have a part part whole diagram where we have 15, 8, and 8. And again, they can change any of those numbers to fix the problem. Using fix-it cards like these has long been a favorite activity of mine for a math warm-up because it gets students really thinking about these skills in a different way and they have to practice some higher order thinking. I have an entire fix-it cards unit, looks like this right here over on TPT or in my store on Susan Jones Teaching, and it is filled with Fix it cards for every different skill uh, that you'll learn in math. So there's addition ones, number sense, subtraction, so on and so forth. So if you're looking for more fix it cards, you can check those out. But again, those addition ones I just shared a picture of are completely free in this unit. All right, next up we have two different print and play math games that your students can play. The first one looks like this right here. It is called First to Fill. And you can see that each player has a little board on this game board. So each player will choose their own crayon and they will need two dice to play this game. Now, what I love about this is students get to recognize the many different ways to make a number. Um, and essentially students will roll two dice together. Here we have a six and a three, and then that player has to find that sum of nine in their grid. Underneath it with a pencil, they will write six plus three, they will write the equation that made that number, and then they will color it in. Students will go back and forth, they will roll the dice, find the sum, and then once they find it in their grid, they have to write the equation underneath it and color it in until one of the player's grids is completely full, and that person is the winner. I love that game because it is quick and easy. They are rolling the dice, they are adding, but then they're practicing writing out that number sentence, that equation. And again, they can see the many different ways they can make a number. And for that board, there's actually a two dice version like I showed you there, but there's also a three dice version um, for when your students get to three add-ins. The second print and play game I have for you is called Tower Races. This one looks like this, and it actually has two different game boards. So this will be one player's game board and then, um, the other player will have their own. And essentially they are trying to fill their tower there, all those blocks, they're trying to fill it first. And to do that, they will have to roll two dice, find the sum, and they will use that many cubes to fill in their tower. And then they pass their dice to their partner. This one is also very simple and easy to be played over and over again. I like to have students do this with cubes, but you can use other manipulatives as well. And here they're not writing down the equation like they did in the first one, first to fill, but here they are actually using the cubes to fill up their tower. And as your students are playing this, I definitely like to ask them, um, how many more cubes do you need to fill your tower? Ask them questions like that. You can also have them look at both their boards and say, who's closer to winning? How do you know? There's a few different questions you can ask to get students thinking as they play. And last but not least in this big freebie for you, I have some story problems. Here is what they look like. I call them illustrate it because here I really want students to make pictorial representations of what's going on in this story problem. So the first one says Jack has five more marbles than Anna. Anna has six marbles. How many marbles do they have in all? Now that one right there you can tell is very tricky. It is a two-step problem. Um, so your students might not be ready for this just yet. You might wanna hold this one off. But when we do this, I like to show how this is done in person. And we explain that, okay, wait, Jack has five more than Anna. So let's draw, we know Anna has six. So you draw that over there. And then we draw Jack having the first six and then having five more and then adding them together. And then the next one says, Mrs. Jones has 17 students in her class and she wants to give a pencil to each one. She has 10 yellow pencils, six blue pencils, and three red pencils. Does she have enough to give out and how do you know? Again, multi-step problem that requires a lot of thinking there. So those are problems I would probably save until later when your students are ready for such things. You'll really wanna start your story problems with regular just joining problems. Um, where you have something here, something here, we add it together so students get used to it. If you're wondering more about how to teach story problems, I have a whole video about it and the different types of story problems you should teach your students. Um, but the ones in this freebie, I would save for a little bit later on in the year, but they are included, so I wanted to show you what they looked like. So there were six of my favorite addition activities to use with your students, and they are all entirely free for you to grab. I will link them all in the description below. Um, for this, they won't come separately. They're all in one kind of pack, which makes it nice and easy for you. And like I said, really the only ones you'll want to kind of save for much later are the story problems, but the other ones you'll want to start with those hands-on games and then maybe go to some of the print and play partner games, incorporate some of the fix-it cards and 
your students will be addition pros in no time. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and got to take away some ideas to use with your own students when you are teaching addition to them. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.